Hello students, today we are going to discuss the deadlock avoidance algorithm and this is our lecture number 22. So in this lecture we will mainly focus on the uh, uh, understanding, a uh, basic understanding of how a uh, deadlock avoidance algorithm works and, and we primarily focus on the uh, uh, using of Banker's algorithm, right? So the main, uh, the basic idea about the deadlock avoidance algorithm is that uh, suppose there is a system, okay, and uh, in that system there are some uh, processes, maybe p1, p2, p3, dot 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 pn, and there are some list of resources, r1, r2, r3, dot dot rn, and these resources have some uh, one more instances, right? Now, having said this, now these process uh, may might demand for some resources, or uh, one or more instance of resources. So whenever it wants to use any, uh, the process wants to use any one of the resources, it might require more than one resource. Suppose uh, P1 requires uh, two instances of R1 and three instances of R4, then it will first try to make a demand. First it will try to make a demand to the operating system and then operating system will try to make a resource allocation step and examine it. Okay? So it will try to, after making, uh, after all the process makes a demand, the um, operating system will prepare a resource allocation state uh, of all the available resources in the system and examine it. So after exam, after the examination of resource allocation state, okay, after the examination of resource allocation state, what will happen is that uh, the uh, operating system might uh, uh, might uh, grant the request made by the uh, process or might not okay, based on the examination. So, um, so uh, basically after the analysis of uh, the uh, resource allocation set or the operating system will take the decision that whether the resource should be granted to the process or not. That is very, very important, right? Okay. So now, having said this, what do you mean by resource allocation state? So resource allocation state is basically designed, uh, constructed by the operating system based on the number of available resources in the system and based on the number of resources allocated to the different processes and based on the total number of demands of resources by the processes. So after analyzing the uh, uh, resource allocation state, um, uh, the, uh, the decision will be made by the operating system whether the resources should be allocated to the process or not. So for example, as we have seen in our resource allocation graph in our last previous session, okay, so if there exists a cycle in a, uh, in a state, such kind of state, then, uh, then we will not try to, uh, or the operating system will not try to allocate the uh, uh, allocate the demand made by the process. So if you do that, okay, uh, there will be no cycle. Then if no cycle, then obviously no uh, uh, no deadlock situation. Okay. So this is how we try to avoid the deadlock uh, in advance before it is encountered by the computer system. So the main idea is all about resource allocation state. So now after making the resource allocation state uh, by the operating system, uh, it will try to uh, prepare, uh, do some analysis, right? As said out here, it will try to examine it. So it will try to examine whether there exists a safe uh, sequence or, or not, okay? If there exists a safe uh, sequence, okay? So I'll discuss safe, what is safe sequence later on. But uh, somehow the other, after examination, somehow the other, after examination of resource allocation state, you will try to identify whether there is a safe sequence or not in the system or not in the system. If there exists a safe sequence, then we say that the system is in a safe state. So the system is in a safe state means um, when the process makes the request and if the request is granted, then the system has to be safe in state. Okay, the system has to be in a safe state provided uh, there exists a safe sequence. So there is, uh, if there exists a safe sequence, then system is said to be in a safe state. So uh, right now, as of now, you just need to understand that what uh, there is some sequence, uh, there is some sequence which consists of list of processes uh, that demands for resources and assuming the fact that resource will be granted to the requesting process. So after the request is granted for the demanding process, uh, we will try to operating system will try to examine the uh, resource allocation state and try to find out the uh, state of the uh, system uh, whether it is a safe state or not. So if there exists a safe sequence, then there exists a safe state. So, 
So you, you, you will understand better if we like if we discuss more on the numerical part. Okay. okay. So now uh, we'll go through first uh, basics about the uh, uh, theory. Okay. Now, what do you mean by safe and unsafe state? All safe, all safe state are obviously not a deadlock state. All safe state are not a deadlock. If the system is in a safe state, then all the requests made by the process can be granted, assuming that if the resource is allocated, it exists in a safe state. So that okay, see, so you can see in this diagram, there is no deadlock in this grayscale region, right? But uh, but uh, when you, when some process uh, one or more process demand for some resource, it might lead to a system in an unsafe state. Basically means uh, there isn't exist uh, uh, existence of safe sequence. If the if in a system there is no safe sequence, then obviously system will be in an unsafe state. Now all unsafe state are not deadlock state. So it might be that uh, okay, it might be that if you allocate the resource to the process. The system is in unsafe state, and there is also some chance that in some unsafe state might be entered into a deadlock state. So what will happen is that uh, when the operating system will try to examine the resource allocation state, it will try to identify whether the system is in a safe state or not. If the system is in safe state, then resource will be granted. If the system is not in a safe state, it will not look whether it will. It is not going to take a chance. The operating system is not going to take a chance that okay irrespective it, will, it may enter it may not enter in the data so irrespective of that so uh, the, uh, if the system is leading to unsafe state then it will not uh, it will not uh, allocate the resources to the process so that's how what is the main idea about the uh, resource uh, i'm sorry and deadlock avoidance because in case of uh, if there exists while running the deadlock avoidance algorithm like bankers algorithm if the system is running in the safe mode then yeah you are the resource can be granted whatever the process has demanded for resources that can be granted however if the system is in uh, unsafe state however if the system is in unsafe state then and uh, then the request cannot be granted right so but it doesn't mean it doesn't uh, guarantee that if the system is unsufficient, it will definitely enter the deadlock. It does not guarantee that, right? I repeat, all unsafe state are not deadlock state, but all deadlock state are unsufficient. So with this, uh, with this theorem, we will we'll move ahead. Okay. So there are various ways to perform the uh, um, and techniques to perform the deadlock avoidance algorithm. So two things that we will discuss over here. One is with the help of the resource allocation graph. Another one is the bankers algorithm. Okay, so now uh, when 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 there is a list of process and the resources in the system, the uh, requesting process for execution it may demand one or more resource, one or more instead of different different resources, right? So now when you try to demand it, okay, or when you try to, uh, yeah, as I told you, the avoidance algorithm it has to uh, propose, it has to propose the list of resources that it needed. Okay, it has to demand it for. Now that demand is made with the help of the claimant. That demand is made with the help of the claimant. So P1 is, the, is trying to demand for an uh, instance of R2, and P2 is also trying to demand for an uh, instance of R2. So it is represented, the claim H is represented by a dotted arrow from process to resource. So this dotted arrow, this dotted arrow we is represents claim H. Okay, this dotted arrow represents Claim it. Now, when the time will come for the process to request, it will first it will try to claim and then after some time it will try to claim uh, request. Okay. First claim, claim age will be followed by requests. So the request request age is same as that we have already studied. Request age means there will be a solid arrow head from P1 to uh, R2, unlike the dot A1. Okay. So first the um, uh, pro process will make the demand or will try to claim I need so and so instance of uh, resources, right? R1 or R2. Right? So it will try to make a demand and that representation is with the is made with the help of the claim is represented with the help of the dotted arrow head. Right? That is first thing. Now when the time will come for the process to request, it will this claim is will get converted to this claim is will get converted to request is the solid arrow head line from P1 to R2. That is number two thing. Number three is if the resource is free, okay. 
if the resource is free then it will be immediately granted like uh, and it is represented with the help of the solid line that you can see over here okay so this one instance of r2 is allocated to p2 so there is a solid a solid arrowhead going from um, r2 to p2 this is how the uh, request is or the claim age will get converted to assignment age, right? So this is uh, this is the general scenario uh, uh, about the deadlock evidence algorithm with respect to resource allocation graph. The claim age was not introduced earlier. Now I have introduced the and the rest of the thing is same. The rest of the thing is same. So after preparing a deadlock, uh, after preparing a resource allocation graph, the operating system will try to analyze the cycle in it. And after analyzing, it will try to identify that whether the system uh, whether the system is, is in the safe state or not, uh, is in the safe state or not. If the system is safe state, then request will be granted. If the system is not in a safe state, means unsafe state, then request will not be granted, right? So, a system is in a safe state, no deadlock. A system is in unsafe state, possibly to deadlock. Okay, evidence ensure that system will never enter in an unsafe state. So, it is not going to take a chance. So, it may end up somewhere here, not here, somewhere here, okay? But still, it is not going to take a chance. So that is all about the deadlock evidence algorithm. Now, now uh, from the resource allocation graph, it was also understood from our previous session that if there is a single instance, okay, suppose there is R one and R two with one instance only, then you can easily say that okay, uh, if there exists a cycle and the resources is of a uh, single instance or one instance, and uh, and then if there exists a cycle, then we can easily say that. Okay, the system is in unsafe state, so you cannot uh, grant the request. You can grant, you can, you cannot allocate the resource of R1, R2 to P2. That we can do. Okay, but if the resources is R of uh, multiple instances, okay, as we have seen in our example, then it may lead to a problem. So for that, if the instances, if the resources instances is of multiple types, then uh, multiple instances we have in uh, different different resources, uh, then we can use Bangor algorithm, right? Now, uh, and this theory you can go through on your own. The basic idea about the Bangor's algorithm is also saying uh, that uh, uh, that the process will try to demand for uh, uh, certain list of resources, uh, maybe um, one instance, two instance, of different different resource type. Then, after making a demand, the operating system will try to make uh, will try to perform the analysis of the resource allocation state. And after analyzing or examining the resource allocation state, it will try to identify whether the system will enter into a safe state or not if the resource is allocated to the resource processor. If it is, uh, if, it, if, if, if the system is landing on uh, the uh, safe state and the request will be granted, if the system will, is entering in an uh, unsafe state, then it will not grant it. So, if, like for example, uh, as the name suggests, bankers are greater. Okay, as the name suggests, bankers are Why bankers are greater, right? Suppose there is a bank and it can give a loan to different different person. And suppose I'm uh, suppose uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, like I'm an employee in SMIT. Then, uh, say for example, the SMIT is paying some uh, salary to me, right? So now I want to build a house. I want to build a house and I want to take a loan, right? Because I don't have enough money to build a house. So then what, what I can do is that I can take a loan from the bank. Now, when I demand for uh, uh, to the bank, okay, I need 50 lakhs of loan to make my house, right? So I need 50 lakhs of uh, 50 lakhs or 50 lakhs amount to make my home. That is my demand. So what I did to make a house, the, my job is to make a house and I am demanding for 50 lakhs to the uh, bank, okay? So bank is a system. Now bank may may give 50 lakhs or not okay, based on the uh, after examining the resource allocation step so bank will try to see uh, various assets that i am holding it maybe my salary my um, standing property like uh, the old house or and the car so based on all the analysis okay uh, the bank will try to satisfy my demand okay if if the bank will give me 50 rupee 50 lakhs and still the bank can run in behind for satisfying the other customer need then obviously bank is going to give me the loan okay after uh, after examining the resource allocation step okay resource allocation state there are there may be various criteria like my uh, my salary my standing property 
and how long I'm going to use and so on. So after analyzing it, bank may give me the certain credit. Okay. Now after giving me, after bank gives me the uh, money, then I will build a house and and I will try to pay the uh, and pay try to pay back the amount in the installment. Um, uh, with some interest, right? So that is the basic idea. That's what uh, that's what bank of the name is given. The process will try to make a demand. The operating system will check the safe sequence, okay, safe state. If it is in the safe state, it will allocate it. And after that, after using, after the resources are being used by the demanding process, after using it, it will try to release it. Okay, release means it will again go back to the uh, system, right? So that is the main idea. So for that. For that, okay, for that, uh, the process has to make the demand. Suppose the P1 needs uh, three instead of R1 and four instead of R4, then it will try to make a claim. Okay, maximum I'm going to use that amount of resources. Then after that, okay, after that, um, uh, uh, it might happen that all the all the resources it might even it might be granted to the requesting process, or it may have to wait. Okay, uh, okay, and after process gets all the resources. Uh, and it will use it and then for finite amount of time after using it it will try to get return back to the uh, return back to the system that's this general procedure okay that's the general procedure okay now to uh, to use it there are various uh, data structure that i'll be using in the algorithm so you can read the algorithm on your own but i'll i'll do the uh, algorithm in short packet first i'll try to solve the numerical and then come back to the algorithm for convenience so there are various data structure that I'm going to use it and nomenclature. Uh, I'm going to use n n for uh, I'm going to use n for number of process and m for number of resource types. Okay, resource types, not uh, instance. Okay, resource type. So there may be three printer. So but m equals to one. So like that. So there are n categories of uh, resource type and n number of process. And uh, data structure that I'm using are available max allocation and utility. Okay. Now, whenever suppose there are P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 in the system, these are the process. Okay, so number of process, five process, name name of the process are P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. So P, uh, these process will demand. Okay, I need uh, five instances of R1, I need two instances of R4, and three instances of R5. Like that, we will try to demand. Okay. So that information is stored in a max. There is a matrix called max. That information is stored over the uh, demand. Okay. The, the demand made by the uh, process for resource is made in the uh, is stored in the data structure max. Okay. Now, so of course uh, there are uh, uh, ten instances of R1 and ten instances of R2 and ten instances of R3. Then out of this 10, 10, 10 of R1, R2 and R3 respectively, how much have we currently in use, okay, for different different processes, okay, P1, P2, P3, say for example. So that information is stored in the allocation. I repeat, allocation stores the information of how much amount of resources, out of total amount of resources available in the system, how much amount of resources are being used by the different different processes. That is stored in the allocation. And available states how much amount of resources are now available for allocation. How much have been already allocated is stored in the allocation matrix. How much is now currently available is stored in the available matrix. Now, the need is uh, how much more again different different processes once. Okay, that is all about the um, available max allocation and need. So we'll go back to the uh, directly jump to the uh, example. Suppose at a particular time, say for example t equals to uh, zero, okay, uh, a snapshot of the system is taken, and in that snapshot of the system, okay, uh, these are the data. Okay, these are data. I'll, I'll, I'll explain the data. Okay, so P4 has demand. It's a P0. There are five processes, P0, P1, P2, P3, and P4. Uh, P0 process, or uh, the process on the P0 needs seven instances of A, five instances of B, and three instances of C resource. A, B, C are the resource. So, uh, process P0, is demanding seven instances of 
seven instances of resource A, five instances of resource B, and three instances of resource A. Like, like, likewise, P1 is demanding for three instances of resource A, two instances of resource B, and three instance, uh, two instances of resource C. Okay, like that we will go on. But in a system, but in a system in total, assuming that none of them are allocated to any of the process, in system there are uh, five processes P0 to P4 and three resources A, B, and C. A has 10 instances, B has five instances, and C has seven instances. A have 10 instances, B have five instances, and C have seven instances. Okay. Now, this is the current snapshot of system. These are the max is going to max is the amount of resource that the process is demanding. This max is the amount of uh, uh, amount of resources that the process is demanding, which cannot all be given at the same time. I repeat, which cannot all be given at the same time, but it has to manage it. So that is the main job of the operating system. Now, this is the demand made made by this process for this scenario. Okay. Now, allocation means out of 10, 5 and 7, okay, how much of them are allocated to different different processes, right? Okay. So say for example, uh, you can see uh, out of 10, uh, A resources allocated to different process, how many? Out of 10, 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 2, 7, 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 2, 7. Out of 10, 7 instances of A resource type is allocated to various process, okay? So, 7 has been allocated so far. So, bacha kita? So, remaining is? So, remaining is? 10 minus 7, 3. So, that's why you get 3 over here. Similarly, likewise, how many amount of resource B has been allocated currently? So, 1 plus 1, 2. So, out of 5, 2 has been given. 1 to um, P0 and another 1 to P3. So, how much is remaining? 3. 5 minus 2 is 3. So, like the Likewise, we have got C also. So, so uh, if you add to this column A, B, and C respectively to this, you will get 10, 5, and 7 respectively. We will try it, okay? 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 2 is uh, 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, 10 equals to 10 instance. Similarly, for B column, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, so 5. And the last one is 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7, so total 7. So like that way, you can even cross-check it, how much is available and how much is allocated. Okay. Sometimes in the question, you will not give it, you will be not given this total number of instances also. Okay. So with, the, with this, we will move ahead. So we will try, uh, try to understand uh, after examining with that whether this system is in a safe state or not. So this is the safety algorithm. Uh, which uh, which is I think as of now you without die, without numerical you will not be able to understand first I will go to the numerical okay so whatever that I speak I am speaking now onwards has been spoken from the algorithm point of view okay first thing okay first thing that you need to have over here is that there is two variable that is used in the algorithm uh, first one is the work okay. And another one is the first one is the work. Okay? Most important is the work, and uh, we have to calculate need matrix always. Okay? So first I'll calculate the first I'll calculate the need matrix. Okay. Okay. Fine. So this need you have calculated using the formula. What is the formula? Max. Okay, I should use. The formula is uh, max minus allocation. M A M max minus allocation. Okay, so we we'll find it out if it's correct or not. Okay, so seven. How do you got it? Okay. Max is seven minus zero is seven. Again, five minus one is four. Okay, three of C of max minus zero of C of allocation. 2 minus 0 is, sorry, max minus allocation. Yeah, 3 minus 0 is 3, okay. Similarly, here, yeah, 3 to 2 minus 2, 0, 0. 3 minus 2 is 1, 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2. Like that, you will get it, okay. So, you need the need matrix later on, okay. 
Okay, so uh, as for the algorithm says that, okay, so first we we'll, try to initialize the in the work uh, available and finish of I uh, fork. Finish of I fork means none of them none of them have completed. None of them have completed. Okay, uh, so work equals to work equals to available. So uh, work. So dot o r k work equals to available. So how much amount is available? Three three two. So three. Okay, two. Okay, so you have initialized in the work variable the value of available, right? So this is first thing. Okay, uh, we'll go through the uh, numerical. Okay, so um, now uh, first of all, as for the algorithm, so this is my this is my safe state algorithm, so, uh, which will help me out to identify the safe sequence. So as for the algorithm, the first job is to assign in the work the available value. So first I will assign in the work the available. So my available is double three two. So three three two. So three instance of A, three instance of B, and two instance of C. Okay. So that is all about uh, the algorithm. First set. Next is finish of I equals to first. I am assuming that all the process have not been completed. So all for P zero also false, P one also false, dot dot dot. P four is also false. And after that, algorithm says that you need to find I in such a way that uh, if the if the process is not finished and the need of I is less than work. Okay, I repeat, need of I is less than work. So need N E E D need of I is less than equals to work. So having said this, you need to find that I, find that I is find that process I whose need is Whose need is less than equals to work. Okay, so we'll go through. First, we'll first we'll check out with process P zero. First, we'll check out with process P zero. Okay, P zero. P zero need is seven four three seven four seven four and three. So this is need of P zero seven four three. So seven is less than three. False. Seven is less than three. False. So if one of the condition is also false, then entire thing will be false. Okay, you can, the entire condition will be false. So you need to find that I. So P zero we can then continue. Now we'll talk with the P one. Okay, P one one two two. So one is less than three. Correct. Two is less than equals to three. That is also correct. And two is less than equals to two. Correct. So we'll have a safe sequence. Okay. We'll have a safe sequence. We'll have a safe sequence. Okay. In that safe sequence, if the condition is satisfied, we'll make the entry for corresponding process P1. P1 criteria is satisfied, so we we'll now cross this P1 and update the value of work and update the value of work from uh, 332 somewhere. Else. So what should be the update value? So work should be updated using work use of work of allocation. Okay. So how much has been allocated to corresponding process P1? So to P1, 200 has been added. Okay. So to this 332, three, three, so you need to add 200. Zero, zero. So now updated value of work is 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 and 2. So this is updated value of work. Now we will continue. Okay. Now we will continue the same process. So you might continue with, uh, start with the uh, starting process or continue from there onwards. So if you start continue from there onwards, you now we need to check this condition from P2 onwards. So for P2, we need to check it. So uh, 600 is less than equals to 532. Okay, check one by one. 6 is less than equals to 5 false. So one condition is false. You need to check for remaining one. Now again for P3, 011. Okay. 0 is less than 5, true. 1 is less than equal to 3, true. And 1 is less than equal to 2, 2. Okay? It's true. So all these 3 is have been set. So you make the entry for P3. You make the entry for P3. Okay? And then strike it out and update the value of work with allocation of P3. So allocation of P3 means 2, 1, 1. 2, 1, 1. Okay? So 5 plus 2 is? 7 okay 5 plus 2 is 7 3 plus 1 is 4 and 2 plus 1 is 3 
So this is my updated work. This is my updated work. Seven four three. The updated updated work. Okay. Now we'll continue. Okay. Now P four. P four. So four is less than equals to seven. Correct. Three is less than equals to four. Correct. One is less than equals to three. That is also correct. So for this, maybe entry for P four. Okay. Strike it out. Update the value of work with the allocation of P four. So zero zero two. Okay. Zero. Zero, two. Okay, so seven, four, and three plus two is five. Seven, four, five. Correct. Okay. Now, uh, now, uh, now. Next is continue. Continue the same process. Okay. So next we start from since there is no uh, process after people we start from beginning. P zero. Okay. Seven is less than equal to seven. Correct. Four is less than equal to four. Correct. Three is less than equal to five. Correct. So we'll make the entry for P zero. Okay. We we'll, we we'll make the entry for P zero. Strike it out and update the value zero one zero zero one zero. So updated value is seven four five. Sorry, seven five. Five, right? So this is my this is my current updated value of work. Okay. Continue. We'll continue. Okay. Now, uh, only left is P two. Okay. Six is less than equal to seven. Correct. Zero is less than equal to five. Correct. And zero is less than equal to seven. True. So what you do? Make the entry for P two over here. Okay. And then. Update the value of work with new value that is P two value three zero two three zero two. If you add it, okay, it's three. Okay, it's three. Seven plus three is ten. Five plus zero is five. Okay, and seven plus two is sorry. It's five. So five plus zero is five. Five plus two is seven. Right. So there was a mistake over here. Five to zero is seven. I have written seven. Okay. Five to zero is five. It should be five. So ten times seven is my work after returning by the after return after resources have been written by process P two. Yeah, process P two. Okay. So my work is now ten five seven. Now to check whether you are correct or not, this should be equal to total number of instances available. Okay. So that's how you make it, and and also you should have in the safe sequence you should have all the process that is available in the system. So in the system P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, all the process are there, should be there in the safe sequence. If there exists a safe sequence something like this, then you will say that the system is in a safe state. If the system is in a safe state, obviously there is no deadlock. Obviously there is no deadlock. Okay, now. So now, uh, for this given snapshot of the system, the safe sequence is uh, P1, P3, P4, P0, P2. Means that if you if you try to uh, satisfy this need of this process in this order, first you give these all the resources to P1. P1 whatever whatever P1 is demanding, that is one to two, it is demanding. If you give one to two to two, uh, P1, okay, P1 will use it and then return it. And after that, uh, whatever is the resources available after returning by the P1, give it to P3. Like that way, you follow this pattern. The sequence should be followed in this order: P1 followed by P3 for allocation of resources. If the system follows this uh, sequence, then the system is in a safe state. So that's all. Uh, that's all about the uh, safety. Uh, yeah, safety algorithm. So, with the help of the safety algorithm, you will be able to understand whether the system is in a safe state or not. Okay. Now, so after that, now after that, it might happen that for next step, because every time in the system you may have some process coming all the time. Okay. For demand of, with the demand of some additional uh, resource. So, with this, uh, for this, uh, there is algorithm called resource request algorithm. So, uh, you can grant the resource, okay, to the process uh, only if it has. Uh, Certain criteria, okay, satisfied. So first of all, suppose the P, uh, there there might be some process, 
uh, who is demanding for some resource. Say for example, okay, say for example, uh, there is some process P1 who is demanding for 1 level 2. Okay, I'll write it over here. There is a process P1. There is a process P1, P1, okay, who is demanding for who is demanding for 102, okay, who is demanding for 102, 1, comma, 0, comma, 2, okay. So, with this scenario, with this uh, allocation and need, okay, max uh, level of work, whatever it is, with this, uh, if P1 is demanding for 102 amount of A, B, and C, okay, 1 instance of A, 0 instance of B, and 2 instance of C, now, can this request be granted or not? So, that decision can be made with the help of a resource allocation, uh, a resource request algorithm. Okay, so to check it, what's, what it needs, it needs to do with that, it needs to check whether the request made by the particular process is less than equals to need or not. Means that um, and available or not. Okay, so in the need matrix also you should check it. So in the need, what is the what is the scenario for P1? In the need, P1 scenario is 1, 2, 2. 1, 2, 2. Okay, so first we'll check it. Uh, request of I is less than need of I. So request is 1, 0, 2 is I'll write it over here. 102 is less than, okay. 102 is less than equals to 1, 1, sorry. 102 is less than equals to 1. So 102 is less than uh, 1, 2, 2. Okay, 1, 0, 2 is less than 1. So, 1 is less than 1, equals to 1, true. 0 is less than equals to 2, true. 2 is less than equals to 2, true. So, first criteria is with sign is right. Okay, first criteria is very bad. So, request of i is less than need of i, true. Now, next is request of i is less than equals to available. So, what is available now? What is available? Available is double 3, 2. Okay, available is double 3, 2. Double 3, 2, okay. Is less than equals to, okay. Request is less than equals to available. Okay. So request is 102. 102. So 1 is less than. Okay, it should not be here. Yeah, it should have been somewhere here. 102 is less than equals to double 3. Two. Okay. So 1 is less than 3. True. 0 is less than 3. True. 2 is less than equals to 2. Okay. So this second condition is also true. Okay. Now. Now what you need to do is that now you need to pretend now you need to pretend that okay the request is granted so you will try to pretend that this resource is now this uh, request is now given to the P1 okay if this P1 is demanding for some additional resource it, let us try to pretend it okay so now when you try to pretend it when you try to pretend it, update the value of allocation and update the value of available. Okay. Now after updating, again you can uh, have a new value of allocation table that we for P1 and new value of uh, available table. Okay. Then again you will try to learn the safety algorithm. Again you try to find the safety values. Okay. After this, all the assumption, assumption, assumptions are pretend. Okay. Now after pretending that this resource. Uh, this request has been granted for P1. You will check and see if there exists a safe sequence. If there exists a safe sequence, then only the uh, request will be granted. Then only the request will be granted. Initially, you will just try to pretend it. Pretend it and try to run the uh, execute the safety algorithm, find the safety algorithm, and check if the system is in safe state or not. If the system is in safe state, by finding the safe sequence, then the request is granted. I hope I have made it clear. Okay. So I'll just uh, give you uh, the rough idea. So first of all, we, what you need to do is that you will have a scenario, some process and the resources are given with some instances, and this scenario is given, allocation, max, available, and need. And then for this given thing, oh, sorry, need is not given, so you need to calculate need, need is calculated using the formula max minus allocation. And after that, you need to execute the safety algorithm, which is this safety algorithm. The safety algorithm says that you have to check for a condition need of i is less than equal to work and find all the PIs, right? And initially you need to uh, initially you need to initialize 
the uh, value of available in the work and then and then and then find the condition okay you need to run the loop step number is to run a loop okay and when you find that value of i okay you will try to update the value of work and make the entry in the step sequence the corresponding process likewise you will go uh, also and so and so if until all the all the processes are covered okay then if all the processes are in the list then if you find uh, all the processes in the list then obviously the system is in a safe state then at that point of time you can say that okay yeah system is in safe state now after that whenever there is some process which is demanding for, for some additional resource for that you need to execute the resource request algorithm it has a certain uh, two criteria request is less than need of i and request is less than available so need of i so these two things need of i are uh, yeah need of i this two thing has to be uh, satisfied okay then after that you will try to assume that if the request is granted what will happen if the request is granted you will make some changes in the allocation and need as well as in the available and then you run the uh, safe sequence uh, safety algorithm and try to find the safety sequence if the system is in safe sequence then you will try to uh, then you will try to uh, execute the uh, or you try to uh, uh, assign the or uh, satisfy the request made by the process people with this, with this, uh, you will try to identify that the system is safe state or not, or request um, uh, can be granted or not. Okay. So they, these are the list of things. Right? Okay. So uh, this is this is the example that I have talked about. The safety sequence might not be same or same. I don't know. Okay. Uh, there might be different uh, scenario as I already told you cover up. Okay. And this is the example for uh, resource. Uh, request now you can try for 330 and uh, 020 for p4 and p0 respectively okay i hope i have made it here thank you if you have any questions please post it or you can bring forward in the next session thank you